Can you run ASIC Bitcoin mining machines at home without bothering the people you live with or your neighbors? And can you direct the heat from those miners to do something useful, like say, heat up your swimming pool in the winter time? You can, and I did. This time, all with stuff that you can order from the internet for about $1,000. Bitcoin mining is hugely energy intensive, and almost all of that energy gets converted into heat when it's done digging up your share of the SHA 256. Normally what people do with that heat is to blow really powerful fans on it to move it up and off the hash boards, and then suck it outdoors with even bigger fans where it can disappear paid into the air and just become a part of the universe. This process is loud and intrusive. Air-cooled Bitcoin mining is simply not compatible with home use unless you've got a lot of space or a spare building that's pretty far from your neighbors. Immersion cooling, however, is super quiet, relatively speaking. It's no louder than running your home AC or a pool pump. I'm on my third iteration of trying to build my own immersion cooling system from scratch. The first one I was just basically trying to understand the process in general. I used all the wrong materials, the wrong size and strength of everything. Attempt number two went extremely well. For this one, I was really just trying to dial in the heat rejection and pump size but I still used materials that would eventually have deteriorated. Which brings us up to this week, where I used pumps, fluid lines, a radiator, and tanks that can all stand up to Bitcool forever and ever. And with some clever use of this technology I've never heard of before, this brazed plate heat exchanger is now heating my swimming pool at a rate of 800 gallons per hour. For this design, I borrowed from the principles of Engineered Fluid's segmented acrylic tank, where they have a cool side and a hot side, coolant flowing up through your miners and then spilling over this divider into a separate chamber where you can then suck it out and run it through a radiator. Radiator. But to simplify the design, I bought a big steel cube and then put a smaller but taller steel cube inside of it where the miners will do their work. I cut some circular holes in the outside of the tank and then bought these little ports that screw together and clamp down. They have half-inch NPT threaded ports that I could run CPVC out and down to this chemical pump. This pump is on the approved list for Bitcool, and I was curious to see if half-inch CPVC could move enough fluid to keep up with two overclocked S19J Pros in one tank. Spoiler alert, it can. One very important thing to note for any seals in the tank or the pump or anywhere, wherever you would normally use rubber, use Viton or nitrile. Nitrile? I picked up this nitrile O-ring kit for $10 at Harbor Freight to seal up all the ports. Next, this radiator has one inch copper inlets and outlets. I'm using this CPVC to copper converter thing, but that meant I had to solder this adapter to the radiator to run CPVC lines in and out of it. That involves hitting this fitting with a torch. And fun fact, the heat that's required to solder copper pipes is way hotter than the heat that's required to deform CPVC. My solution was to put the CPVC end in a crucible full of water to solder this copper collar onto one side. And then I draped a wet rag over it while blowing fire, like a dragon, to connect it to the radiator. Taking these measures was not obvious the first time, so unfortunately I ruined one and had to wait two days to get another one. What a bummer. With the radiator and tank prepped, I chose a spot at random behind the she shed where the radiator would live and hogged a couple of holes in the wall for piping. If you're a plumber or an irrigation guy and you're watching this, I guess I can just go ahead and apologize ahead of time for my liberal use of CPVC cement. It just seems like this is a case where not enough is terrible, but too much is maybe ugly, but will do the job. Next, the inner tank was a little too tall. This is a toolbox for a truck. I only wanted the coolant to rise up through maybe an inch above the miner, so that it's not too terrible to get at the ethernet or swap out the SD card for an overclock. So I cut a series of holes in the inner tank so the bit cool can just spill out into the outer tank, where I'll suck it out, run it through the radiator, and put it back into the inner tank again. Now I have tanks, I've got the radiator plumbed. Next up was just to build the network of CPVC pipes to carry the bit cool around. If you're gonna make one of these things, you have to use CPVC, not regular PVC. It's the slightly yellow tinted stuff. Also, the yellow jug of PVC cement is the high temp stuff. And since moving heat around is basically the entire project, I went with that stuff. I used some one inch tubes of CPVC for the floor of the tank and built like a little frame for the S19Js to sit on top of. I made it 10 inches by 10 inches, which is about the size of two hashboard intakes slammed together from the S19J Pros. And then left a little opening in the middle to pump in cooled bit cool. The principle of this idea is that it'll sort to pump in and then hit the back of that frame and spread out evenly as it moves up through the miners. My goal is to create a column of cooled coolant that will sort of swirl as it moves up through the machines to make sure it hits each chip on its way through. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually see whether or not it's doing what I intended to do, but you'll see in a minute that the hashboard temperatures reflect that this is working effectively. I picked up pumps and this heat exchanger all with half inch male NPT threads to simplify the parts needed and keep everything half inch other than the connections to the radiator. This is a brazed plate heat exchanger, basically hot 
Bitcool is pumped in from the tank and through a bunch of channels in this block. Cold water is also pumped in from the pool through a separate set of channels in the same block. The two liquids do not come in contact with each other inside of there, but the heat from the Bitcool is absorbed by the copper plates, and the heat from the copper plates is then absorbed by the water, as they all sort of swirl around in the same chunk of metal. Then, the Bitcool exits a little bit cooler, and the water exits a little bit hotter. What a cool piece of technology. So the heat exchanger pulls Bitcool from a separate port on the tank than the radiator. It runs on its own pump, and it's a completely separated circuit. This way I can control the amount of heat rejection by running either one or the other or both cooling loops. It'll also serve as a redundancy in case one of the pumps dies or something gets clogged or whatever else. Hogged a couple more holes in the wall, and then a third one because I took bad measurements, and then it was time to go outside to finish up the CPVC lines for the pool heating loop. I just ran everything across the lawn for now. We're still in the prototype phase of this very good idea. I'll bury everything underground once I know it actually works. With the plumbing done, I took the fans off of a couple of S19J Pros and lowered them into the tank. Fun fact, once the ASIC.TO overclocks are ready, they include a software fan spoofer. So gone are the days where you have to use these little red devils that don't always work. My contact there tells me it'll be ready any day now. Or if you're watching this video in the future, maybe it already is. Now all that was left was to fill the system and watch for leaks. This thing drank up five buckets of Bitcool. I guess I didn't factor that into the original price. This dielectric coolant from Engineered Fluids comes in at a hefty $180 per bucket. About the same price by volume as this really good chili from Four Rivers, this barbecue place that I like down here. Totally worth it. The pipes were connected, the system was full, so I flicked the switch. Huh. Oh boy. So even though the pump is lower than the tank, so naturally the liquid should find its way down, since the whole system was closed to the air, it goes back through the radiator and then down into the bottom of the tank, there's nowhere for the air to escape and the pump couldn't prime. I cut the pipe at its highest point to allow the air to escape, and then in a very unnecessary step that I will never repeat, and please don't do this at home. <laughs> Wow, is that PVC glue a strong taste and smell. I might have knocked a month off my life with that move. But upon turning it back on, we have flow. I slapped that line back together and did the same thing with the pool loop and everything was pumping perfectly. Of course it couldn't just be all good news from here. Before I knew this ASIC.TO overclock had a built-in software fan spoofer, two of my chippy ones decided just to not do their job, so I had to get in there and give them a wiggle. It's not super easy to clean this stuff off with just a paper towel, so now the she shed has a bunch of shiny door handles. Win some, lose some. The only other problem I ran into was with this heat exchanger. Apparently, using the much cheaper all CPVC half-inch FNTP threaded bits won't seal properly. That's a mouthful. So I ended up having to cut out this portion and go get a metal-ended CPVC half-inch FNTP bit to run the part that goes out to the pool. It's worth the four bucks to not have to drive back to Home Depot when you think this thing is ready to go. Currently, my pool temperature is 16 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit at the intake. And this thing is now putting out a 24-hour non-stop faucet of 78.5 degrees Fahrenheit. 26 degrees Celsius? Back into the pool. As the pool water slowly heats up, so will the exit temperature of the hot side of this thing too. So when my pool makes it to 70, now it's gonna be putting out 90 or whatever. It'll take a pretty long time to actually heat the pool, but this pump does say it moves something like 800 gallons an hour. With a smaller body of water, like a hot tub, this system would just get hotter and hotter forever until it matches the heat of the oil in the tank, which seems to be resting around 101 degrees Fahrenheit with a 125 terahash overclock applied to both machines. Immersion cooling at home in a shed with the added benefit of heating your pool for free. It's quiet, it's inconspicuous, and now that I've done this a few times, I think I could put this together in an afternoon from its parts. Of course, if you don't want to solder copper pipes or assemble CPVC or cut holes in metal tanks, there are currently two companies that I know about that are making these kits totally ready to use. EngineeredFluids.com, the makers of Bitcool, and DCX out of Poland. I'm gonna go back to Engineered Fluids in a couple of weeks and sit down and talk to those guys about their system and see what they think about this mess. If you can look past the utterly embarrassing conditions of the interior of the she shed, this thing is really kind of nice just to sit and watch it work.